Walking in love has no alternative. You have to make up your mind to walk in love. You have to train yourself to walk in love. And to walk in love, there are things you do. Open your heart. Don't be hardened against your brethren. Don't be hardened against your, your siblings, your family. Don't be hardened against other ministers. Don't be hardened. Let your heart be softened towards others. Be easily stared to help. Be easily stared. You say, Pastor Chris, but um, if you're easily stared to help, what about if people take advantage of you? It's better that they take advantage of you for doing good than for you to be hardened and not do what you should do. That's better. Because, hey, come on. If someone takes advantage of your goodness, can your goodness expire? Will it come to an end? You have an ever-flowing stream of goodness. It can't run dry. Hallelujah. So, we've dealt with church one uh, here today. We'll be looking at others. I mean, think about it, for example. Like many of us, we love to do things for God. We love to do things for God. Then, imagine we are preparing our funds, our finances to build a new, a new church building for God. Okay? And then we don't pay those who are working with us. We don't, we, we, we don't give them the finances they require or even what we promise to give. But we're building a church building for God. You think he would like to use that building? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. And that's why I've been praying that God will forgive his churches because these are some of the sins in the churches. These are some of the sins in the churches. We put money to build big buildings, beautiful ones. At least for some weeks now, you have not used them. Just so you know that there are some things that are more important in life. So this is why I said there are things to be repented of. See, there are things to be repented of. People are the true value. They're the ones for whom Jesus came. He didn't come to build any structure. He didn't come to set up large groups. That's not what he came to do. He came to save souls. Every individual. Until you see the individuals as persons of value. The one million congregation means nothing. As long as they are a congregation to you. And not individual persons. Then it means nothing to God. It's not about the crowd. It's about the value of the individual lives. Because we can be so big. Okay? We are so big and so known. We have this larger than life image. Okay? That the individual persons don't mean anything to us. We have no time for anybody. Because we are, we are very important. We have big things to do. So individual lives are nothing to us. Only the large crowds and the big platforms. And when Jesus sees that, what goes through his mind? Ephesus. Ephesus goes through his mind. Ephesus. He says, if you don't repent, I'll remove your candlestick. I'll take that church out of his place. That's what he said. And I tell you, as we review these things and repent, 
you would see the move of God's spirit like you never saw before. Because if we don't identify these things and repent, we will just go back to how we were before and continue business as usual and not prepare for the coming of the Lord. And then we lose too much. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall it profit a man? Think about it. Sometimes, as big as we are, because we are very big, okay? I mean, ministers of God are very big. Christians are very big, okay? Now, when you become very big, and you are so protected by security paraphernalia, okay? One soul, one, one soul is in such a need, and we become very insensitive. And we may not be able to distinguish between what we need to pay attention to and what we might need to ignore. To the point, for our own security, we ignore all. But Jesus was not like that. He knew what to ignore. He knew how to hear a cry in a crowd. And he listened to that individual. Can we be sensitive? If God gives you an opportunity again, will you be sensitive to the cry of that one individual that's difficult to see? So, these are things that must come through your mind. And you ask the Lord to show you those areas that you need to address and have a heart of love that is pushed by love, stirred by love. And you come to that point where there's no one that you don't like. And every individual you meet has value before you. And then you see people beyond the crowd, beyond the large congregation. You see individual persons. You see them, their value. Then you give time and attention to the high as well as to the lowly. You give attention to the one that is nicely dressed and looking gorgeous. And you give to the one who looks Dirty, poor, ragged. It's up to you. I'm sure you'd like the Lord to think well of you. So we're going to pray at this time. And pray about the life that you're living Pray about your current condition for the guidance of the Spirit in your life. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your church. And pray for other churches. Go ahead and pray right now. And if you've mistreated anyone, pray for that one. Ask the Lord to forgive you for your hardness of heart. And pray for those who despitefully use you or even persecute you. Pray now.